Welcome my beautiful Blaze Blue fangirls and fan boys. Today we are here with making a tier list or more like a matchup chart. I'm using tier maker as you can see and um, yeah. As you also can see I'm a huge Kagura nerd buff and fanboy. And also I've got this levelless device. I don't play him on levelless, I play him on a normal arcade stick. But yeah, I had to put him on the device. Nonetheless, that's a fan art I found online. Sadly, I don't know who drew, drew it. I only have this uh, 068880 sign here. But yeah, without further ado, let's go into the matchup chart. So, of course, starting with the man himself, Kagura, um, maybe even go getting giving you a short round up on what he's good at and what he's bad at. So, in short, Kagura has one of the strongest defenses in the game. So with B Fafnir in 5A you can pretty much enter air everything and get very good reward out of it. A 3k for B Fafnir and 4k for a counter hit 5A. And of course you've got C Fafnir to always flash kick out. So that's his biggest strength. Not so much of a strength is his offense because um, it's very committal in most cases. Like if you go into C buttons or into drive, into drives, into his stances, then your opponent can pretty much always OD out or um, use an invincible reversal. But other than that, his offense is actually quite scary and good because of mostly because of the damage, of course, but also because he has some very unreactable ma uh, mix-ups. Uh, you can go for Kadamos and for TK Kadamos on the ground as an uh, overhead and 6A as an overhead and especially Kadamos in conjunction with his 3C which is a low uh, pretty much unreactable you have to guess beforehand what is coming out so that makes him quite strong of course lots of characters have that but still this in conjunction with high with very high big damage he's a menace. So personally I always say triple S tier of course, but when we are more realistic, I'm gonna put, I would put him into an uh, into a high tier position, not into low tier, like many others would, because I believe in my man. And yeah, as such, as you now know what his strengths and his weaknesses are, he has all the tools to deal with his offense because his offense has uh, gaps, but he himself can deal with any gap all the time. So depending on what you, what kind of p person you are, it's either it's either a curse zero zero or it's a blessed ten ten matchup. I decided for the ten ten matchup. So um, yeah, let's start this with the next character, and we have Noel. Noel is a character I hardly play against, and I haven't played a, against a high level player, so I don't really know that much about her. I know that of course her. her um, her drive attacks have gaps in between them. She's essentially, in a way, <laughs> a bit like a, a fast Kagura. So, uh, she, but instead of great damage, she has abysmal damage. Her pokes are not that great, but they are not super bad either. And uh, because, from what, from my experience, we can zone her out fer fairly well with our JC, so we can keep her out all the time and we do humongous damage and she only does does puny damage i would actually agree with uh, with all the noel down players down there <laughs> so everyone says noel is bad i doubt that to be honest i mean she's probably not good but she isn't that bad i believe but yeah in this case it's uh, I'm not knowing enough, so I can't confidently put her in they lose. So it's more like we win, and we win would be like 5.5 ish for us, or six, uh, or six, a uh, six four for us, something around this point. Uh, this, uh, yeah, around that. Uh, so next up, we have nine, and nine is definitely one of our worst matchups, just because she got the range. And the speed to contest us, so we can't outzone her. We have to essentially pray they mess up. So this obviously makes a, a they win tier. So they win for me personally is uh, 6.56 ish. So for them, of course. 
So yeah, nine definitely here. I will order them later on, but of course now I'm just going with the order here. So next up we have Izanami and Izanami, no questions asked, they win. Ribcage is just too broken and bits and on top of that, if we decide to Wyvern while they are in the air for repositioning or maybe calling them out, she has great buttons to contest Wyvern. Uh, so Wyvern's top, Wyvern's third box on the tip of the sword and also they can just use a uses light while they are in the air and their 2B is super broken to beat up Wyvern and Hydra and all in all it's just such a great character. Um, one advantage that of course we have against most of the cards in Izanami so I believe Kago has a slightly better uh, matchup than most characters is that we only need very few hits to win the game. Especially of course if they mismanage their barrier but that is not something you can assume, so um, yeah, they win, and I probably keep them in the top spot for a while at least. So uh, next up, Tsubaki, another character I don't know that much about. I've played ag against Gura, so I believe Gura is our strongest uh, Tsubaki player in Europe, and Gura cooked me of course, but it didn't feel one-sided at all, so they were playing fairly passive, downloading me while on the wall, so what they did, what won them the round is they overdrive through uh, a greedy 2D Avritra. But um, on a, all in all, I think she has okayish pokes. She has to build meter for her really good stuff. And of course, that forces us a bit to go in there and um, don't play super uh, defensively. But all in all, I don't think she outpokes us or anything. So, uh, I'm torn between Evenish and Rewin. I'm gonna put her into Evenish right now, but I can definitely see us winning uh, the match up very well. Light, she's another of those cases. She's a super top tier, but I have not played against any good Light, she. And so, um, I will put her into Zay Win just because. Uh, also, I believe she has uh, fairly good pokes, so. Also very good in contesting our range because of her stuff and of course if the stuff is out on the ground she can make pretty much everything safe and also gets reasonable damage for everything. I mean more than reasonable of course, but uh, yeah, she also gets good damage out of it. And now with Lambda we got another, another matchup that looks somewhat dire for us. Because she's a zoner, she can zone us all out all day. But the thing is, she doesn't have that much health, and I honestly think it's not that bad then. Because if they mess up, they mess up, and they ha essentially have to burst immediately. But of course, if they burst immediately, they got the edge in neutral again. So that makes them from a two touch to a three touch character because bursting is pretty much free for them, and we don't really have much. To burst bait. Other than that, of course, uh, the main difference between Lambda and Nu being that uh, Nu has better zoning capabilities in that she actually has mix up while, has, while she's zoning and Lambda does not. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna put her in We Lose, unfortunately. Same for Nu. Um, but of course, this is one of the matchups we get one hit and we can. Uh, steamroll them because their defensive capabilities are good but they are not extraordinary or anything like they've got this annoying sword move that is good but it's not that good in the corner i believe and um in general low de low health characters we got big damage and that evens it out quite a bit and now Tega, a matchup i have played quite often recently against the Gurichav on a sub probably because he's an astral player a big guy player and uh, dennis cooks me in tournaments all the time so of course seeing that uh, dennis is a super high level player i can't really base it on the tournament result and honestly he's a we win character and he's more we win than noel so the entire thing about tega um is that what makes the matchup so good for us is that our 2c has uh, foot properties 
which makes it crush all of his armored moves. So we can just zone him out with 2C, 5C and uh, JC all the time. But of course that doesn't mix him up, so he can just confidently wait and wait and block and block and get his uh, Sparkbolt back. So Sparkbolt is a great equalizer why I don't put him into in they lose. Because when they get Sparkbolt up, they've got the threat of Sparkbolting us all the time. So essentially we have to play a bit passive then and uh, bait them into using Sparkbolt. Maybe even calling it out with Wyvern, but that's very bossy because uh, Tega does very good against our drives. He can just throw us most of the time. So that's so we just have to use our superior range in that matchup and our projectile as well as Fafnir for calling out um, for calling out their offense when they're on top of us, but also for um, enter airing them when they want to get into this get into the fight. And um, yeah, all in all, still very good. Especially as he got the big boy properties, which makes which gives us uh, an instant overhead with JC rapid cancel JC. So we still got some mix, even though of course he you don't want to get close to him. So lots of your mix is n is kind of locked behind how ballsy are you and how um, confident is your opponent in in stopping that. If they are not really good at stopping them, then then this is like. Omega lose, but it's not. So we win 5-5-6, five, 5-5 five, six, five, five or 6, and uh, yeah, all in all, very good matchup. Still, Tega is, from all the games I've played, the zoner I like to fight the least because of magnetism, and he just resets you every... Whenever he gets the chance, he tries to reset you, and that's very stressful, as well as him having a projectile that magnetizes you. Yeah, but still, we win. We win this, boys. So, <laughs> from we win to probably our worst matchup. One of our worst matchups, at least. So the thing about um, New Twelve is that she has that she essentially contests our range, and she has uh, this auto zone with the Stein Scanner, so she can just place them and they often bail her out when she does get hit, which is very annoying, regardless of the character you play. But all in all, I think the worst part is just her her commanding neutral all the time because of Stein's Gunners. And then she also got amazing mix with 6B Rapid Cancel. Like, hits the first, uh, blocks the first hit, which is, which is uh, mid, and then normally comes a high, but then she comes a low, and you can't react to that. So she has all the capabilities to open you up. She has a DP that beats our DP, by the way. So if we flash kick and they do their triangle thing, then they win, which is very annoying. And of course, Stein Scanner being Stein Scanner, especially when they are long on the field and blast out that laser. Super strong, super annoying. And she also got quite some damage for what she does as a zoner to us. So she is like one of the worst matchups for our man. And next up we are against another character I don't have that much uh, that much experience about. It's Jubei. So essentially um, in the Jubei matchup they are pre from as far as I know the pressure has gaps if they want to set up their um, furball Oki then not the Oki, but when they want to set it up in neutral, of course, we can call that out. They can call out our uh, orbs as well, so that makes it fairly neutral. The only reason I'm really putting him into rewin is that uh, Crouch confirms work on him all the time, which is quite well, quite good in this case. Or even though I don't think Rhea is a character, Kagura is a character that uh, profits most of it. But all in all, I don't feel like. Um, Jube is so oppressive that he is even or or maybe maybe he is even okay I'm just gonna put him even just similarly to Tsubaki I believe they could be in rewin but I'm gonna put them in even just to be safe so next up is Ezreal the scary monkey but we win I'd say just because he has to get super close we have best the best tools to keep him out from ourselves and 
That's essentially the matchup. Contain the monkey. And if you can contain the monkey, then uh, it's smooth sailing, but if not, then pray to God he doesn't mix up mix you up 3000 times. You could also make a case for him being evenish, to be honest. So, um, but no, I believe that our outranging uh, is enough to put him into rewin. Although I have to say, him being able to neutralize our orbs is kinda, um, and getting a projector of his own from them is pretty annoying. So, yeah, okay, I'm still gonna put him into evenish just because of that. Because Phalanx is a pretty good projector and we can feed him and. If we don't use Orb as at all, then of course he doesn't get Phalanx, but we lose Orb. So, and Orb is one of our best tools, so that's not something that we want to do. So yeah, I'm gonna put him into Evenish for now. And it's looking dire for my entire, yeah, he's high tier <laughs> argument. Especially as S is another, um... Is it? Is it another they win? I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna put her into we lose and the thing about S is she has similar range we have slightly uh, longer range but she is faster so that doesn't amount to anything at all um, but of course we've got the tool we've got all the defensive tools so we can get our way out of there at some point and then of course S has a DP and she can even make it safe with meter of course but yeah, I got cooked most of the time in fighting against that character and they also have an unreactable and all. I sadly have to put them into they win. I want to make a case for we only lose, but they win. It's a rough matchup, all in all. But I believe that should be the last <laughs> they win matchup. Because Kokonoa, of course, also top tier contender. Um, it doesn't feel that bad, to be honest. So she can put us in, put us in, in the. I'm not sure if she's we lose or evenish, but uh, yeah, she of course has all the great trapping tools with um, the lightning rod and teleport and her fireball and her her way of magnetism, and that can be very annoying to fight if they want to play a bit more zonish. Zonerish, but of course if they play more Zonerish then we have Wyvern to call that out and if they want to stay on top we have Seafafnir to uh, get out and we out damage Kokonoa quite well, quite a lot unless of course if we count for Golden Tega routes but those are more like her cap is higher than ours but we got the consistent damage and of course she got the 6A of the gods which is also fairly bad for us but all in all just just us having such a strong um such a strong defense definitely contains her a lot so even a case it's a case for either evenish or we lose but i really want to <laughs> want to put some into the we win territory and honestly those co those three could be we win so that's the point. Yeah, she could be we lose, those could be we win. That's what evenish tier is uh, is for. But speaking of we win, we've got Bang, Shishigami, and despite what Ancestor says, it's not. I don't think it's even. I definitely think Kagura has the edge, because the thing about Bang is he needs to. He of course got all the mobility. He got snails and uh, bumper setups and all the good stuff but he at the end of the day he still needs to get in and Kagura has the best tool to keep him out mostly JC our beloved fly sweater but of course also um, when he has gaps in his offense and his offense has gaps like if he tries to TK Musasabi that's a gap and that could be a C Fafnir if he tries to reset his uh, neutral with uh, 6A or 5C or anything, there's a gap, you can see Fafnir. And then when he's out there, then he has to fight his way back in. And nails are a finite resource. If they weren't, then he would be a super high tier. Not super high, but probably a top tier even. 
if we could just spam D nails all day, those would be that would be too broken. But yeah, uh, we we actually win this. So the only thing, of course, that is very annoying is Shibugeki, which can be 5k if he's an overdrive and does Shibugeki. Also talking about his overdrive ruin Kazan. Similar notice he he needs to get in, and us just jumping back and using uh, JC helps so much in that. So he can't really use it that well as an offensive tool to mix you, uh, to open you up. And is more it should probably just use his overdrive to either get a combo on us when we overextend or um, or just extend his combos. And we get the another we win situation. And honestly, yeah, I put him there, but I'm no, yeah, exactly. Uh, so for how I'm gonna do it, we win what is in the front is like we win less than everything that comes after. So I'm gonna put in put it like this for now. Um, the thing is, uh, Ragnar. Very, uh, very solid character with with great pokes, but the problem is he has no mix. <laughs> That's what everyone says. But more importantly, the problem in this specific matchup is that um, while he has the edge in neutral, he has the blood edge in neutral. Sorry for that. Um, he, while he has the edge in neutral, he can gap the difference in uh, in range quite easily with just a few micro dashes so that's not the big problem for him the big problem for him is of course opening us up because everything he can do to open us up leaves a gap which leads to either b fafnir or c fafnir and he actually has quite a lot of stuff that he would want to do that uh, is b fafnir vulnerable for the inf infamous uh, gauntlet hades which is the low uh, which is the high sorry um double high of course you could uh, dodge the second hit with all characters, but you can play around that, but you can't play around getting enter add on the first hit, so either pressing 5a or b fafniing it nets you a 3 to 4k damage there, even more of course if, you, if you're willing to spend overdrive and uh, meter, so that one opportunity to mix you up, ending up into losing almost half your health is quite big for him for Kyle, for Ragnar and then um, of course you can mix it, you can add to that to the injury that his death side uh, which is usually a tool he wants to press every now and then to reset his pressure because he's plus after that um, will also get beef off near and he will take another 3k for that and then when he wants to go into more pressure, if he wants to reset his pressure using dead spike, if you if he's if he's too close, that's a thief of near. And these kind of things make it really hard for him to win the game because yeah, he wins neutral, but we win on defense, so even if he's on offense, then that's not really that uh, great for him. Of course, if he outplays you, he outplays you. That's that's the name of the game, right? But uh, if both players are equally good, I believe the Kagura wins. Just like that. The only thing that Ragnar does have in his favor is a very, very strong overdrive. So if he uses two C, uh, if we use any C button, really, except for maybe J JC uh, or a stance, then he can pop that and make us really regret it and uh, also restore lots of health. But the idea is to not let it come to that. Right, so of course that again, as with Bang, makes him an we win or evenish uh, discussion. And yeah, but I feel confident in my ability to play against Ragnar, and I also feel very confident in my ability um, with Kago uh, with Kagura. So not in my ability, but in Kagura's ability to fight Ragnar. Because even when I fight Ragnar, I uh, mess up punishing Gauntlet Hades all the time, but if you did this then uh, he would be a puppy because you can't really do that much. Um, also the similar case for Asphalt now that I think about it. I really want to put him back into Rewind. I'm gonna do that. Just because I um, 
remembered that of C. Fafni is super strong. He, he can't really cross you up that much. And also when he tries to uh, use 5D to uh, get a uh, high overhead on you, then also. But yeah, I'm gonna make a case that Ezreal is stronger against us than Bang and Ragnar. And yeah, this if you're a Kagura player who's stronger than me, then maybe lots of this might sound very off and stuff, but that's the beauty about uh, matchup shards to uh, share our uh, opinion in a way that leads to discussion. Something that probably doesn't need to discuss uh, to be discussed is that Jin cooks us. So um, of course he doesn't Omega cook us, but he just has so good to. Uh, such good buttons and he also got the overdrive robbery with uh, with 6k plus damage when he gets it which is always bad of course for us and um, 3c being a button of all time just sniping our wyvern left and right but it's not really entirely hopeless because we still got the slight range advantage we can uh, outzone him with projectiles. His projectiles are not really good and of course if we projectiles poorly then that can mean a uh, wyvern and in some cases when he uses it in the air even uh, Sirish to dodge it which is uh, pretty funny and uh, that helps him a lot but all in all I believe um, similar to Ragnar he is on top of us but unlike Ragnar his he isn't really supposed to mix you up with anything and he can just play it solid and has super good defensive tools against us so um, that makes him very strong like he has an anti-air that he doesn't need to commit as hard as Ragnar another thing that I forgot to mention about Ragnar you can actually jump behind his uh, uh, behind his DP and still get the hit an area hit with JB happened quite a lot of time to me but I didn't have the confirm rate but if I had the confirm rate then like yeah opponent just wanting to cross you up and beating your DP attempt for that is pretty pretty severe so but yeah all in all Jin is such a solid character and every Jin player is carried but they don't won't listen to that <laughs> Hibiki next He's another one of those solid type of characters, but again, um, if he wants to extend his pressure and use overheads and stuff, then he's gonna have some gaps that leads to see if Fafnir's and we can uh, we can zone him out. I believe, yeah, we don't beat him as hard as we do Ragnar. And with Hibiki, another case, there are not many Hibiki players and I haven't played a Hibiki player that is Omega strong, so yeah, I might be wrong about him and he might be evenish but he's no way there's no way he's beyond evenish so um yeah essentially what he has is um the deep his d buttons they send out clones and you can either commit to them and also move your hibiki around or just use them as a projectile and yeah if you just use them as a projectile or anyway i think even if he follows with it then Wyvern beats it, so there's not really that he can um, that he can outzone us. We've got the huge range advantage on our buttons, and uh, for aerial approaches, of course, we have B Fafnir and uh, C Fafnir for any gaps. So that makes our uh, our defense super strong against him, and also our neutral not bad because we really outrange him and uh, getting in there with. Uh, with our C buttons and then when he when we are on top he has a DP but it's not super good or anything. Uh, so all in all we we win. But now we have to sadly crack another Zaywin case. I overlooked him. Um, and I'm honestly not sure if any of the other characters should move down. And yeah honestly Hazama might be our worst matchup. Um, like, oh, okay, move my mouse there, then it's not uh, in the way. Um, because essentially what he has is great mobility and great zoning combined with his drive attacks. So he can just uh, 
essentially chill in an area where we can't reach him and then if we try to maneuver to him towards him he can often punish us for that especially with wyverns and anything so he doesn't he isn't afraid to zone us out like lambda or nu he just can do it for pretty much free he got um yeah um and in his stance of course um with the, with the overhead one we can uh we can contest that with B Fafni or 5A, but the problem of course is it da it would sound like okay he goes into stance we just see Fafni but uh, his his low option from the stance uh, has armor so the chances are that we don't hit him but hit his armor and then we are in a very tough spot for trying something obvious and of course he can also backdash during his stance and call out the C Fafnir so it's not easy to ex uh, to get out of a stand so he even has quite good mix that is not really that well um, that well uh, reactable and he also got a common grab uh, up close that he can then use overall just such a tricky character just because he can move around like crazy like really really crazy and uh, punish him while he's up there which is something that pretty much no other character can and that's why i believe he might be the worst our worst matchup just grinning in our face like that i don't like it but talking about our worst matchup it's followed by our best matchup against bullet because the problem with bullet is uh, she needs to get she needs to get in but he, she doesn't have good tools to get in. But we have good tools to keep her out. So that makes it very uh, very one-sided. So essentially whenever I play a bullet I feel bad when I lose because they outplayed me all the time. And I just still won. Just because the discrepancy in the characters is just that. The matchup is just that tough. So of course she when once she gets close of course she is a menace even for Kagura, but still I believe that we do a lot better in that situation than most other characters. Um, she has safe jumps which are which you of course have to take into account when uh, being on defense, and she has a common grab which of course is the entire point around her kit that she can. Uh, can beat you up pretty hard but the problem with that of course is that she has to get heat levels up and of and the thing is of course if we chill too much and she just gets the heat levels and that's on us and we play poorly but um if she doesn't then yeah she's just a little kitty like you can't she can't do can't really do anything and one good thing one thing that helps her a bit of course is burst in this matchup quite a lot as I said with the zoners, uh, you get this position where you are very far away and that gives her pretty much a free heat level. So that's pretty good for her. But other than that, I don't ever see her winning the match up. So yeah, this might be a 6, 6.5 kind of thing. I don't think there is any 7-3 seven, seven, matchups for uh, Kagura. But Ballet is really one of the matchups that... If they win, they really deserve it, and you should uh, give them a hug and all your money because, uh, yeah, they just played so hard with this uh, barely functional character. <laughs> you see that I don't have the best uh, opinion about Billet as a character as a whole, but I do believe that when I play as another character who actually gets to, needs to get close like Bang, she's a lot more scary. But with Kagura, no, she's not scary. So, uh, another evenish character, just because I don't, uh, I do not have played her enough. The thing about uh, Platinum, she has fairly good range, is fairly fast, and she got all those items, and some of those items, like the Cat Pull, are really good against us. So with the Cat Pull, she can just, uh, she can outrange us very, very convincingly. And um, yeah, difficult to say. We can uh, we can of course punish a lot of her stuff. Like uh, if she tries to go for the uh, 
Overhead Mummy Circular, that's a beef half near. Um, I mean, in some cases, even a 5A, but I believe it also stuffs 5A sometimes, so not really that adv advisable. And um, yeah, I'm running a bit out of steam, what to say, because the matchup is kind of random, because it really always depends on what she does in uh, uh, what item she gets in her neutral. The present boxes are annoying, she can get uh, the bat, which is good on defense, which of course makes our offense even worse then. Um, but all in all, of course, if she wants to reset with uh, um, whatever that uh, floating move is called, then we can see Fafnir. And I believe in lots of cases we can see Fafnir, so I don't see it's bad and we still outrange her to some degree. She doesn't have a projectile ordinarily. Um, of course, if she gets... Uh, Poi Poi, the Halo Rings, then of course she got the projectile to contest our uh, orbs, but all in all she's more of a character that wants to stay on top of us and has good enough pokes to do so, but she's n it's not, it's even, it, it feels even, and when I get defeated by Kev App or Zeke, then it feels like they deserved it, but yeah, I'm still annoyed because the character is annoying, but yeah. Um... Another we win situation and actually quite kind of hard. So yeah, um, I'm not sure if I want to put her. Yeah, I believe we win even harder than against Tega. So the thing about Makoto is she is a brawler. She needs to get in on the same time. We've got all the tools to, to keep her on. This is something that you've heard a lot among the video. The problem with her stuff is that she has lots of gaps in it. Especially like one thing that they like to do is do the comment dash and then one of the follow-ups But that leaves her vulnerable to see Fafnir and that is if I'm not mistaken that Is for all of the follow-ups. So if she jumps into the air see Fafnir if she wants to mix you up down there um, With a the low see Fafnir if she wants to use the overhead and maybe rapid cancel to get a full combo see Fafnir so that's the theory behind that and with our big buttons, just keeping her out, then getting on top. And she has Corona Upper as a defensive tool, and she has a Super as a defensive tool, which of course helps her, yes. But if we then can beat, uh, can uh, bait them, then we can still stay on top and just beat her very heavily for pretty much anything. So that's a big problem with characters who have to get in very close against Kagura. It's always difficult. That's Essentially the same as his Ballet, but unlike Ballet, Makoto actually got good movement. Or at least average movement, and uh, that makes her... Uh, yeah, that doesn't make it... That doesn't make her as bad as Ballet, so that's what I wanted to say. Next up, we are using... Uh, we are going for Valkenhain, and he's another evenish, but he's on the end of... Uh, we lose, but I believe the matchup against uh, um, Kokono is still is worse for us. So um, the thing about Valkenhain, he is considered a very high tier. Some might even uh, put him into top tier. But um, yeah, the thing about is he him he needs to uh, he needs to get get in. Or rather, he has super strong mobility with his wolf, so he can just uh, bait stuff and outmaneuver you and stuff. But of course, this means still means he needs to outplay you because the problem with his wolf form is that he can't block during that. And if he just uh, dashes into a B Fafni or C Fafni, then that's damage, and that's a good situation for us again because his uh, buttons when he is in human form aren't that uh, they aren't that oppressive they aren't super fast they, they got good range but they aren't anything of the other stuff that might make him scary so he's actually fairly manageable because of that because he needs to take risks to get in like if he gets in then yeah no character can block this unblock his unreactable overheads like you just can't do it on a human level as a, if you were uh, task assisted then yeah you could do this but 
you can't. And there's quite a lot that you can also do with Kagura to improve your matchup. For instance, um, when he's on, when you didn't uh, flash kick his approach and he is using uh, Wolf 5A into Wolf 5, uh, 5C, so like the double overhead. Um, then what happens if you instant block the first one and put 5A in then you can get a 5A counter and leading to 4k damage and uh, stuff like that. So he has to take so many risks to do his very oppressive stuff, but risk is what we uh, as Kagura's player want to uh, take advantage of and that we can take advantage of probably the best from the entire cast just because our, um, maybe not the best, but among the best, like, his Kagura's defense is arguably the, de the best. He has uh, two weaknesses in his defense. One is being that he doesn't have a designated uh, um, enter air button, like he doesn't have Ragnar 6A or anything, or Kokonoa 6A for that matter. But um, and he doesn't have a six frame 2A. That's the only two downsides he has on defense. Everything else is absolutely godlike, even jumping out. And then being able, always being, or pretty much often being able to just uh, JC and not getting punished is amazing. And that is why Balkenhain is evenish. Yeah, he's strong, but he doesn't have the super great uh, matchup against us. And next up, Susano. And this is another evenish case. I don't believe he wins, but um, when he's on top of us, he's one of he's pretty scary. So um, the thing is why 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 he is here and Makoto is there is because his buttons actually got range and they got damage when they hit. But other than that, of course, if he takes an unnecessary risk we can pu punish accordingly and he has to um, unlock his very oppressive stuff of course his, he needs to unlock his dp he needs to unlock the spin wheel but the spin wheel of course is something that we can take advantage of when we can see it coming or we can ha we can just block the one thing of course he can extend his pressure quite a lot with 6b so instead blocking the second hit of 6b and then seeing so there's lots of mind games involved in this like yeah we still got the range advantage we still got the advantage on defense but susano's offense is just very oppressive and he also got uh, got press if we want if he wants to uh, punish us with a common grab of course that's quite reactable so on highest level that wouldn't be working but below that yeah susano is pretty much a scrub killer and um i believe the better so the higher the level is, the evener the matchup gets. Personally, I get, I get super scared when fighting uh, Susano and got beaten up a lot. But if the person is worse than I am or a similar level, then I usually can get on top. If they, are, if they are very strong, then they just can rush me down very convincingly. Yeah, and here this. Uh, And this will shock you the most because people would uh, expect Rachel is an Omega win situation because she's a top tier and she's super strong and super mobile. And then you'd think, okay, if she isn't, they win, then obviously Kagura loses. But no, similar case as Kokonoa or Valkenhain at that matter, to that matter. And yeah, I will also rearrange that. Um, I personally have a positive track record against Rachel as a character. So if you've seen my videos before, I've even beaten uh, uh, Europe's best Rachel player once. He also beat me once, so that makes us even in terms of play count. But me being a mid-level player and being able to beat one of the oppressive, most oppressive characters in the game definitely shows that, um, that the matchup is not that bad for Kagura. Because... Uh, <laughs> Similar situation as with Valkenhain. She got this... Uh, let me rearrange this, actually. Um, she got this super... So... Um, she got the mobility to move maneuver around everything. But the problem with hers against Valkenhain is both are on a timer, but her timer is uh, four times. 
and his timer is kind of extendable, like uh, <laughs> depending on how he manages his meter, how often he does stuff and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, her mobility doesn't make her a very strong case for outzoning us, because if she tries to outzone us, then she essentially just turns into a worse version of those two. Um, and I believe that is also what happened in the match against Eli, because he thought, yeah, a Kagura, um, if I just zone him out, if I don't let him get close, then I can easily beat him. But it didn't work out. If you're Rachel, then you need to, uh, all, then I believe, ideally you do, you do both. You run offense and you zone out, just so that your opponent can't get uh, accustomed to what you're doing. So the thing about Rachel, what, what makes her really strong is actually her offense. So the thing is, her neutral, yeah, she ha can maneuver around really quick. She has some sheep neutral tools, like the bats that flow ar uh, fly around and then they can hit you and you tag and then she gets into a favorable po position. But um, all in all, I don't. she isn't like just run in or just do this, just open rib cage, just jump away or and Ouroboros. Uh, no, she actually has to maneuver around everything that Kagura does and that leaves her open to making mistakes and when she makes mistakes she gets uh, destroyed. Like her defense is not good. She got the gaming share which isn't the best uh, DP and she got uh, 6A which is yeah very good. But of course, 6A anti-air. So if you don't really jump cautiously, uh, jump uh, carelessly, then she can't really use that as a defensive tool. And the other thing that makes her very strong is that she can keep you locked down with George very easily. And in many matchups, I believe that's a very good tool in neutral as well. Just put George on the screen and then uh, use the wind to move George where the opponent is. Or the opponent for George's, depending on whether the opponent may be on the in the air or anything. But Kagura can kill George easily. Like um, we can kill him with any C button. And most characters need like two hits with most uh, with their buttons, but Kagura doesn't. Kagura just needs one C button. And if you can jump back and time your JC so that you hit uh, George with the tip. And there's not really anything that uh, Rachel can do about it. She doesn't have the greatest range either, so her 6B has good range, but anything else is uh, like, yeah, kind of mid in terms of range, not really good, which makes sense because she can get on top of you very easily, and when she uh, gets in that position, in that winning position, and puts out George, and you get locked, and then you have to react to, then you have to deal with unreactable. Or a mix up or a high low mix up because she can use her wind to use overhead but again she is on a timer with all of that and if she uh, essentially used all her wind up to get the uh, to get to the position then she can't mix you up with her wind so that's the entire idea that her wind is a uh, is a scarce resource and Kagura it's kind of good to punish all her mistakes she does, and yeah, that's why I think she might be worse than uh, Valkenhayn in this spe specifically. And let me fix this. Um, next up, we've got Hakuman, and Hakuman is another case of Evenish, and he is probably one of the purest cases of Evenish. So, what? But you could make an argument for we lose. Um, the thing about Hakuman and Kagura, and Kagura is uh, we both got about the same range. Um, but he got, of course, all the counters that we need to look out for, and builds meter while not doing anything. So if we just try to outzone him, then he gets rewarded with having more meter and having those very big uh, combos to punish us, especially when he pops OD and then punishes our two our C buttons or drive buttons, which makes it very scary to uh, 
to play against him. But of course, um, we have a common grab that beats all his throws, and of course, even a norm uh, that beats all his counters, even normal grab would beat that. So, um, if he j is too content just sitting there, then we can punish that with throws. Simple as that. Like, he can't take our comment grab if he's just too confident in this. And also, we can mix up our high-low in a way that isn't super predictable. Like, um, and bait his counters too. So if he wants to counter and then he just sits uh, and we didn't do anything. And then we can follow up with 6B into a full combo and, and stuff like that. So that makes it even, even though on paper it looks like, yeah, he builds me, he has the same range, he builds meter, he, get, he got good defensive tools against Kagura, and he doesn't he doesn't need to get in because he builds meter over time, right? So the Kagura has to uh, do the in initiative. But um, yeah, if you can overcome that, if you can get a hit in, if you maybe um, low profile his, his 6C, no, no his... Uh, 4C, sorry, he has uh, several C buttons. This 4C, then you can uh, you get a combo, you get a life lead, and of course he's still confident sitting just there, but you can grab him whenever, and that makes him very strong. Personally, of course, I'm not the best in running offense with Kagura, so uh, him, if he tries to just sit there and build meter, then he often gets his win condition against me personally, but if you're better with your Kagura offense, then this is a very even matchup. Because yeah, he can always rob you, you can always rob him. Both got the same range, but you got common grab you got he got the counters and you got the counter counter which is grabs and common grabs. So uh, and you've got uh, better anti-air buttons and stuff like uh, Hakumen doesn't really have that great as of anti air tool, but he got the anti anti air with um, not Yanagi, I forgot what it's called, but the 214A in the air, which even beats B Fafnir, which is annoying. You can techni technically uh, jump up and throw him during that, so that's the tool that you have against his tool. So, as you see, I'm telling you, yeah, he can do this, but we can do that, and vice versa all the time. So that's why I believe that's an uh, evenish uh, matchup. And next up, we've got a we win situation, I believe. Again, uh, I've played again, so I haven't, I don't have extreme amounts of uh, matchup experience against Celica, but I've got more than against Noel because I've played uh, Kaminari who is one of the strongest Celicas in uh, Europe and he also beats me fairly convincingly. But from what I see is what is her knowing that she that her overhead has uh, iframes, so you can't just see Fafnir through it. You can time it correctly, but that's a very wild guess. Um, ideally, you j better jump out and take your turn again, or you instant block and try to turn your turn, uh, try to uh, take your turn again. But all in all, she is like, um, honestly, we beat Ragnar harder. Uh, <laughs> um, she has good buttons, which makes it difficult for us to uh, contest, uh, to play against her. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know the matchup enough, but yeah, she has uh, cross ups and stuff, and lots of points where we could potentially see Fafnir. If she is in the air, B Fafnir, 5A. Um, yeah, it's a problem about the character. She doesn't really have any super specific flaws or anything. She doesn't have anything super great about her either. The one thing that is that are the best things are her dive attack, her dive kick in the air, which can be kind of tricky to deal with. You could, of course, uh, B Fafnir it if you're ready for it. If you don't, then then yeah, it's difficult because I I had times when I missed time my B Fafnir, but all in all, doesn't isn't very scary. Doesn't run super tight, super long offense. You can see Fafnir. You can zone, uh, keep her out with C buttons. All in all, it's like an insane game. 
Oh yeah, I did a mistake. It was a mistake. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, about her again, I'd like to say more, but I need more matchup experience and this is also why we hopefully make this a yearly, uh, a yearly tradition. But then of course when we do it yearly then every follow-up video can be way shorter just because I take what I have here and <laughs> and change things up and not do it from scratch all the time and only need to say give a very short summary about why I think we win or we lose. Um Okay, uh Relius is uh difficult. I know that Serpent a uh, Kagura player way better than me since he's he's here. He's our worst matchup. But no, I don't agree with that. So and against Rilius I actually have quite a lot of matchup experience. Of course, one of my first matchups, one of my first ever rival trigger from was in the beginner pen with me. He was a Rilius player and we had a very intense uh, set in the, in the very first beginner pen I entered. It was amazing, it's one of my favorite sets. Sadly, it's lost to time, there's no word of it. That's one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel, so I never have this feeling again. Oh, that match was so high, why don't I have a what? Um, but I'm gonna make a case for it's evenish. Or do I? It's either evenish or we lose. I'm just gonna put him on the top of evenish. Um, but the thing is, uh, Relius, of course, is not super. It's not super fast or anything. His uh, button speed is similar to ours, so that's not the deal. The deal with him, of course, is Ignis, his puppet, that he can kind of uh, throw around trying to zone us out. But the problem with that approach is, of course, if he does that and we block, we can often just follow up with 5A and make uh, and put some damage to his wife, so he has a scorch on the yeah on the bottom for her and if we diminish this gorge all the time wifeless uh relius is not scary at all um so yeah all in all the, the matchup essentially goes as follows he tries to outzone us with his wife and if he gets if he gets us blocking uh, then he can follow up and put it in the blender and we have to deal with that, of course. Um, we can see Fafni a lot of his stuff, not a lot of stuff, but for instance, his Swiss knife that he likes to use to reset his pressure and also maybe to do some combo, to do some, yeah, to do some extended combos. Um, we can see Fafni that. And when he's trying to put out his, his super, where his, uh, where Ignis attacks you the entire time, then if he does that full screen, if he doesn't do that on wake up or block up, then we can deal with it as, a, as any other characters, high jump and dash away, dash in or dash away, depending on what you think he wants to do. And the one thing that makes it, that the things that are good for us is still our range our, and our damage. So if he does, he has more, HP, I think he also got 11.5k. But yeah, we can we can learn some JCs, 5Cs, 2Cs, maybe 6Bs, 2Bs. It's not that he has great defense except for um, for Ledley. So this is a move where he turns around. Of course, we can in theory punish that, but if he makes it safe by also attacking with Ignis at the same time, then there's pretty much nothing we can do about that and that of course beats all our um, C buttons and our throw uh, and our stances. But I think yeah, you can throw him during it, that. So it's not free of risk, but of course if he if you try to throw and get stuff by his uh, doll, then that is pretty difficult. So all in all he got super good tools to put him in the blender. Mm -hmm. But no, let's say let's state it this way. So he he has to put work in to put us into us into the blender, similar to Rachel, right? 
and um, when we are when he got the blender then he's very scary uh, again similar to Rachel but before that he has to struggle a bit he doesn't have as good movement as Rachel and um, and but the thing that makes him very strong is that he can uh, even without overdrive consistently punish C buttons and uh, and stances if he's willing to do if he's willing to use Ledley and if he can set up it so that he uses Ledley and can put his wife out at the same time because if he does Ledley and he doesn't use his wife then he can get punished pretty big pretty huge with Kagura so um, all in all I think I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him here just behind Rachel in the evenish category and it kind of looks weird to see Jin above Rachel but that's what I believe what my matchup experience tells me um another weird thing here Amane we lose so it's it might be my least favorite matchup in the game and for similar reasons as uh, Hazama because he got this movement with his uh, uh, with a special he got several specials dedicated to kind of jumping around around and then he's trying to mix you up with his movement come down uh, vertically attack you with that and the big thing that makes him so annoying is what also makes Hazama so annoying he, he got those super long range normals and unlike Hazamas uh, or Noose or anything those aren't projectiles they've just they've got the intended hitbox I think they also got an extended hurtbox but essentially because they are so quick and so um, and so long range he can catch us so we have we have to be a sitting duck in that matchup. The only the thing that we can do, of course, is when he moves around, tries to uh, attack us, use B Fafnir and maybe even C Fafnir at some point. But the problem is because we are a sitting duck, um, he can build up his win condition. So Amane wants to build up his uh, drill guy gauge to level three, and once he got this, then um, uh, once you got that then the amount of ship he does is insane and if you block and block and block and he can build up he can use his drive moves to build up the um, drive, uh, his drill gauge and he gets into this position where he is uh, level 3 he can even do overdrive to make this even faster and then it's just tough because we can't really run in rush him down like many other characters can we just have to sit there so this is like a, a we lose situation and I believe I, sh I shouldn't let myself get so influenced by others because I know that Serpent or rather the Kagura Discord says it's here because we do the big damage after all and they have to take some risk but personally I feel like uh, they just get rewarded for pretty much everything they do like if they attack you then then they get drill gauge so um, if they block they don't get rewarded but they can they win neutral very convincingly so winning neutral uh, letting us block all the time getting the drill gauge getting the win condition bam easy as that um okay yeah that's about it and next up is the kit Carl the Kid with uh, Nirvana and he is similar to uh, to Relius but um, the thing about Carl is he's more mobile which is very good in the matchup of course um, he got his uh, he can keep you longer in the blender with uh, Nirvana he's overall safer he doesn't have lead lay but instead has this move where he crosses you up for a prolonged time which isn't really something you can do to just use uh, to try to bait out our uh, offensive stuff and yeah Carl is one of those matchups I haven't had enough experience with uh, especially against high level players I do know that he's very oppressive 
when he got, gets into the win condition, when he got one hit and then he can put you into the blender all over and over and over again. And it's really difficult to get out there because most of the stuff he does then is uh, using his stole, also using Nirvana. And when he uses Nirvana, then yeah, then he's fairly safe. He's most of the time too far away for you to Fafnir. So yeah, um, Nirvana wins the matchup, Karl doesn't, but uh, sadly it's Karl and Nirvana. And very similar to, uh, similarly to uh, Relius, our biggest strength here is our strong, our fast 5A that we can use to put her out of commission and our long range buttons, uh, our long range C buttons. But unlike Relius, he doesn't have the call out tool to punish our C buttons and um, Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking right now if he should really be that up high or if I should put him into Evenish as well. Or maybe if I should put those uh, four, first four entries of Evenish into Relu's. That of course is also a possibility. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at that later on. Because we got, we've got another Relu's. And I believe... Yeah, it's... Uh, we lose harder to him than we lose to uh, uh, we we lose to Jin, and the idea is essentially the same as with Susano and Makoto, that he rushes down. But the problem with Naoto is he rushes down. He's incredibly safe with pretty much everything, and if he doesn't want to rush you down, and he can use his long range. Uh, D buttons, charge them and uh, get a guard break if you don't carry a barrier guard and um, that makes him very oppressive similar to Relius he, he got sway to call out anything we do which can which gives him also the defensive tools to deal with us so um, the idea about this matchup is of course uh, we still outrange him so we can get a JC in or anything and if he try, if he's too aggressive, we can still punish him with Bifafni on 5A. But once he's uh, once he's on top of us, then we have to rely on him overextending with using his overhead or any special or anything. His Wrecker series is also interesting because it's too tight to Wrecker uh, to um, to Bifafni through, and he usually only uses it when he has. Uh, meter available to make it safe and then he uses all three hits and uh, continues pressuring afterwards and he can pressure for a very long time and on top of that he gets a similar damage to us so yeah that's a very rough uh, matchup he is one of the best characters in the game and he's definitely the best uh, traditional rushdown character in the game he just needs a uh, strong execution in his skills to pull it off so all in all, another we lose situation. Of course, neutral is not as huge a resource, but defense is more uh, difficult. So I'm honestly putting him above the adults, above uh, Nu and Lambda, because on defense we are stronger against those. Next up is Tao Kaka, and Tao Kaka is a very, is for me personally, a fairly convincing. Uh, we win and the uh, idea is of course depending on who so um i know that nika so maybe if you've watched uh, <laughs> giuna's video uh, about nika about nika's match in i believe no i don't know the tournament name again but yes yeah, strongest europe uh tau kaka player thinks it's it's good for Tau, but honestly, I have never played Tau at that level, and I've only got uh, to play against mid level Taus and stuff. And the one thing in this matchup is Tau got the mobility, so that makes her similar to Valkenhain, but she isn't that scary. Like, she doesn't have those immediate I kill you mix ups, she just got fairly honest mix ups that you can deal with fairly well with uh, Kagura if she wants to use her overhead for I believe any of her overheads for instance it's very easy just see Fafnir and um, 
the one thing that is very in her favor though is that she has a very good that she can mesh out fairly well uh, from uh, 5da hydra but that only means you have one tool less in this matchup but anything else your defensive tools are super good against tau and um, she doesn't do that much damage back and she of course has to chase you down with uh, or yeah i mean this really depends on the players right who has to chase down who maybe they are content just uh, jumping around the screen and annoying you but if they go in and um, if they decide to go in and try to chase us down then jc is sh uh, just such a strong tool and tao kaka one of those characters not having a dp really hurts in the kagura matchup that's just that's the gist of it that's also something that i forgot to mention about bang not having a dp against kagura oof this is like this is something that those two characters got a lot those three got a lot better so ragnar hibiki and as well all got the dp to make us uh, struggle and now we've got the final i'm honestly thinking whether i should put makoto down here too i guess i do um so yeah makoto here <laughs> but we are talking about terumi now and terumi poor terumi so terumi has good offense when he gets close but he needs to get close and his tools are not that great um and even though i said he had great offense that still means lots of gaps and gaps uh, invite Cephafnirs, we outrange him all the time. Is actually his best, his very best tool against us JD, because that button is very uh, disjointed and he can beat our Fafnirs with that. And I don't think he can beat our beef, uh, not Fafnirs, uh, he can beat our Wyverns with that, but I don't think he can beat our uh, beef Fafnirs. And all in all, he isn't a scary character when he's on top of you. Like, yeah, he had got some mix-ups where you have to guess, like he has a super that can either be a low or a high, depending on which which super he goes, and that look fairly similar. But if you block that, or even better, if you see Fafni that, then there's no blocking required. Then you can just see Fafni and be happy, and he wasted 50 meter for that. And the only good thing about him that makes him uh, probably a bit better than Bullet is that he he has very strong overdrive rubber refactor and he gets gains meter very quickly right because that's this entire thing that he with his d buttons i believe he can uh get meter and with 100 meter and overdrive he got so uh an unblockable super that is full screen but of course if you, you can jump out fairly easily and all in all this man struggles a lot in generally is considered a low tier and in the Kagura matchup, he struggles probably even more. Whew, final three characters. This video has been way too long. I was thinking that maybe, yeah, maybe we get a 20, 30 minutes video, but no, 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 no. Um, yeah, and I generally think that probably you want to use this as a podcast and not watch it the entire time. But yeah, maybe if you do, uh, then yeah, thank you anyway if you made it this far in the, into the video. So uh, next up is Kune, Arakune. And this is um, a slightly loose matchup. But maybe I should put him into Evenish. Mm, yeah, that's the, that's the point. I'm not sure if I'm... Uh, what to do about these characters. If I put them into We Lose. Or if I put him down into Evenish. Or maybe I should do another. Um, okay, Arakuna. I've played a few strong uh, Arakunas on my way. I believe Valak is fairly strong, and of course, I've played Nessica on the Arakuna. And um, yeah, the Arakuna matchup is, is always the same uh, regarding which play, it doesn't really matter which character you have, but. Um, the thing about him, he's not that good before he ha has curse, um, 
and he's just jumping around using tricky movement to get you to get a hit in and then curse you and then he wins um but in that portion where he just tries to float around and stuff Kagura is actually very good because uh, 60 ha has amazing amazing range uh, even getting uh, aerial opponents but of course Akune with his tricky dash which gives him some invul um, is really annoying to pin down but if we pin him down then of course we get big damage but the thing about Arakune is he got a weird hitbox and we can't convert the best we can um, in most of his cases because for instance uh, uh, our classic yeah our default 60 route doesn't work so yeah, we have to leave out the a orb and second viritra and then we get less damage and it's less consistent and stuff like that is also something that applies to Seleka by the way so that's also why she's a bit more on the um, better side in this but uh, yeah yeah you can't block him when he's in when he has bugs you can maybe sometimes see Faf near him which is great because then you uh, he has way less time to mix you up but that's very situational uh, but we win before that and when he does and can pretty much kill him ideally kill him before that and that's why I believe we can make a case for him being evenish um yeah next up another we lose <laughs> my i think they are it's even as uh, they win because my is uh, essentially ragnar but she does uh, but uh, we can't sh tool uh, shut down her tools that much so she got the ragnar range and she got a dive kick she can has tricky movement she can uh, flip out of of lot of stuff but of course we can also call out the flip but all in all she can just stay on top and when she gets her overheads of course both overheads can be c fafniert one is the one that gives her omega plus frames can even be b fafniert so that's great or uh, 5 8 even um so yeah three three to four k damage there just for her using her overhead that is good in our matchup, in our case, but the problem is um, she can also zone us out very effectively with her, with her projector. I believe it's just the D button and she can charge that to make it unblockable or rather uh, you have to barrier block it then and all in all. Not a matchup I'm confident uh, that we win, but thinking about it again a bit, it's here. It's really loose. It's a... It's borderline here <laughs> because as I said we got the tools against their uh, against their overheads and all in all the thing about her stance is that she doesn't have that many uh, mix-up opportunities she does, can't draw very weirdly because uh, because yeah her, um, her pressure is essentially more or less auto combos with different enders and then get the hits in but of course because she got the range and the speed it's very difficult to fight her show so she's very much like s and speaking of s i'm i think yeah she doesn't believe she doesn't uh, deserve to be in the zay win because she's pretty much the same as my in most cases like great range fast buttons can hit us out very easily S can pin us down a lot better than afterwards because she got got tier Oki, but my on the other on the other hand has uh, less committal options to zone us out and um, all in all, I rather fight an S than a my. So that's this, and lastly we are we have another we lose with. Uh, Isayoi. So the thing about Isayoi is, uh, or do we lose that? Mm, okay, I'm not sure if we lose. I have to elaborate a bit here. Um, um, yeah. Um, 
Okay, gets this together. She doesn't have to... No, she does have reasonable range with her pokes, but it's more like Spucky type of range. Um, she... The most annoying thing is, of course, she tries to float around at the start and let you block her projectiles, because then she gets the... Um, then she got the stocks she needs in her... Uh, in her floating form where her dash becomes like Eno's and because she has uh, yeah the dif difficult thing about her is not that she has movement like Eno which is still very annoying because that means that she has mix up that is essentially like here like with Rachel it's not really reactable but because she has those projectiles and uh, most importantly a teleport um, it is very difficult to keep her out. It's a, m a lot more difficult than Rachel. She got better defensive tools. I believe she got a DP. She got uh, several anti-air specials as well. And again, teleporting. Teleporting will never stop being sheep, especially when it's like her that she can just teleport directly to you and not in even a set distance or anything. So you can't really m maneuver around her teleport. On the bright side, of course, we got the fly sweater jc so can get lots of hits in with that we've got the damage a lot more than they do they are very moderate in terms of damage unless of course they get the 2c counter a fatal counter hit and believe in that case they can get 6k plus damage or at least 5k plus damage and um, all in all very strong overdrive of course then they benefit from us uh, being so vulnerable to overdrive uh, and yeah I believe again we've got strong enough defensive tools to deal with her bullshit for the most time but uh, she still has all the bullshit and has the edge so it's not like here where they have the edge and even on defense we have quite quite a lot of trouble and honestly I'm thinking about Lychee Yeah, that were my thoughts so far. Now I, I need to make up my mind how to do this here. Because, to be honest, those feel in a different tier than those. <laughs> it's like, I honestly believe we put the bucky down here until we win. Yeah, essentially, uh, <sighs> ah, yeah, but I don't want to make another tier for those and say, like, yeah, uh, maybe we lose, <laughs> but maybe it's even. And here it's like, yeah, it's even, like, you know, I feel like uh, calling this evenish is good enough for that. And yeah, all in all, let me check this again. If there's any character I can say we might, I mean, that might be even. Again, Amane, according to uh, Serpent. And I could see a, a case for Karl, because I don't have much matchup experience and I'm not familiar in what exactly it is. He does so much better than his dad. And maybe for Jin to be honest. Jin of course is way too high here because everyone else is a lot stronger against us and um, yeah I just have to take this so um, is Jin stronger against us than Arakuna? Probably not than, uh, than Kokonur, probably not as well yeah, I think I'm gonna put him here. So, like, yeah. So this is a this is a line where it might be slightly favorable to them. No, this is the line I believe, and this is this is dead even. These are dead even probably. A case for Jubei being we win. So those are dead even. Jubei could be here. And. Um, those are evenish essentially. 
I mean, I could make the tier, right? Yeah, I'm gonna make the tier. No, wait. Yeah, I... So... Uh, at row below. And here this is... This is dead even. And dead even are those here. Okay. <laughs> so we got... Uh, we got bo uh, two uh, we got two tiers for even. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, but it makes sense because the discrepancy here is quite a lot between Jin and Aurelius because I really believe that Jin has yeah Jin is better than Rage. Is he better than Bulk? He's better than Bulk in this matchup. So, yeah, because he doesn't have to take all those risks that, so, that those two char characters need. His highs might not be as high as theirs, but uh, yeah, all in all, just being a very solid character makes Jin a very solid pick against Kalgova, the character that is a very high risk, high reward character. And if you can consistently ke uh, keep him from getting his high risk, uh, from getting his high rewards, then he only has to take high risk, right? So, yeah. I honestly believe after about one and a half hours, this is my year one uh, matchup chart for Kagura. Again, I'm excited to see uh, to see how this how my opinion changes over the next years, hopefully. And I believe it was a nice uh, change of pace for the channel to have this kind of content for once, and also to have this as a uh, year is going to a close special, so uh, you're probably seeing, may, you may be seeing it before Christmas or before New Year, but it's very New Year-ish here. So uh, yeah, now letting looking into the camera again. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time as well. I believe I'm going to make a normal tier list and. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for today, folks. Uh, see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.